everyone. So in this video, I am just going to highlight some important parts from chapter 29, sections 2, 3, and 4. So while you're doing your reading notes, if you need to pause the video as you progress through each section, that's totally fine. So you don't have to sit and watch the video um, all at once. But we're going to cover Greek religion, Greek architecture, and Greek sculpture. All right. So some things I want to highlight um, and I want you guys to understand from Greek religion is that every city-state had a god or goddess. I've been over that with you before. Um, and it was thought that this god or goddess is going to provide the people of that city-state with special protection. And an example of this is Athena, who is the goddess of Athens. And they believed that the gods had power over a certain part of of life. So goddess, or sorry, Athena is the goddess of war and wisdom. Um, there is a very large statue of her that was placed inside the Parthenon. And while we have our online class, um, I'm going to go over that and show you. And if you, if you remember from last week, the Parthenon is that big temple that they created specifically just for Athena. So we've talked about the temple of um, the Parthenon located on top of the Acropolis. But another important temple I want you guys to know of is um, the temple in Delphi that was dedicated to the god Apollo. So there was a priestess, we call her the Oracle of Delphi, who um, lived in this temple and she would sort of go into this trance and I believe that they talked a little bit about this in the video um, The Last Stand so you got to see or you know what I'm talking about and they would go to people would visit the oracle this priestess um, anytime they needed to ask a certain question or talk to Apollo get advice and they believe that her words were those of Apollo's. And so she was sort of like the only one who could talk to her. Um, or talk to him, sorry. So another thing I want you guys to know is just the mythology. Um, we know that, or we it's believed that there were 12 gods who lived on Mount Olympus, okay? We call them the Olympian gods. Here is... It gives you um, the examples of the gods and what the 12 gods and what their role was. Okay. Um, they are a part of everyday life. They uh, basically, anytime people wanted to go on um, a journey, if they needed to request help, then they would go and speak to the gods at the temples. They dedicated their festivals and sporting events, an example would be the Olympics, to the gods. And a lot of the decoration that we see on the outside were images of the gods as well on the outside of the temples. All right, so once you have read this section, complete your check for understanding and your reading notes. Don't worry about this first one, okay? Uh, but you're going to do one, two, and three. For section two. Okay, let's talk about architecture. Architecture is very important um, in ancient Greece because a lot of the architecture that we see now in our modern day actually comes from ancient Greece and also from ancient Rome. But the Greeks were the first to develop um, these temples, okay, these great places of worship. And these were earth dwelling places for the gods and goddesses, meaning that um, they believed that the temples were like the earthly homes for the gods and goddesses when they came down from Mount Olympus. Um, the ceremonies, like any sort of religious ceremony or festival, were held outside of the temple. So don't think of it as a church where people go to congregate and worship the, the gods. It was actually um, people weren't allowed inside. Only the priests and the priestesses were allowed inside the temple. You can see here in this picture how big 
uh, this is the picture of the Parthenon, how large it actually is, okay? So temples show balance, they show order, they show beauty. And one of the greatest things that the ancient Greeks came up with were the columns. You must know the different types of columns, okay? There's three different types of columns. There's the Doric, which is located right here. This is the simplest, this is the earliest. There's no base, it gets narrower towards the top, and it's kind of just like blah, I guess you can think of it that way. The second column is called the Ionic, and the Ionic column has these scrolls at the top, maybe you've seen those before, and it also has a base, and it is very thin. And then the last column that you guys must know is the Corinthian. And the Corinthian is very elaborate, and it has these like leaves um, and decoration here at the top, and it has a base at the bottom as well. So you have Doric, Ionic, and the Corinthian right there. So Parthenon, you need to know that there were eight columns in the front and eight columns in the back and that there are 17 columns along the sides, okay? The roof right here is in the shape of a triangle, okay? And that is called a pediment. And then the sculptures inside the pediment and along here, on the bottom, those are called freeze, freezes. And then those specific individual sculptures right here, those are called metopes. So you need to know those different architectural features. You need to know pediments, which is the triangle part of any sort of Greek building. You need, which is there in the front and in the back. You need to know the freeze, which is like the actual sculptures, and then, or like the band right here, sorry, and then the individual pieces of art and sculpture inside are called the metopes. So there's many different sizes of temples, but this, the shape is, is very basic and it's very um, similar. They had a very large room with a statue of the god or goddess inside, um, Athena stands 30 feet high. I can show you just a really quick picture of Athena statue in Parthenon. Um, this is what it was believed to look like. And so you can see that it is very large. It stood in the middle, um, made out of gold, 30 feet high. Pretty incredible. So they would have typically a statue in the center. Um, it was made out of wood, but then it was covered with ivory to make it look more lifelike. And then dressed in clothes, decorated with gold. It represents beauty, um, and it shows their awe of the gods and goddesses. So go ahead, pause, do the check for understanding, and then you're going to fill in these reading notes. Okay, our last section for this video talks about Greek sculpture. And we've seen um, a lot of examples of Greek sculptures. Sculpt, I can't spell today. Okay. Um, you've seen different, right, different pictures, different. Um, examples of Greek sculptures throughout time. So <clears throat> here we go. Um, this is a great example of Athena, just like how we saw earlier of Greek sculpture. Um, what they would do is sculptors would set up a workshop close to the site where the finished statue would be placed because obviously 
carrying such a large statue across town is not going to be feasible. So they would set up their own workshop and then they would have apprentices, meaning like people who would work for them. And they would make like a life-size clay model um, supported by metal or wood frames. And then it would be, the outline would be roughed out in marble, but then the master sculptor would come in and he would be the one who put all the finishing touches and all the finishing details. Surprisingly enough, when we think of a Greek sculpture, it is, we think of just like plain white. Um, and that's um, not accurate from what we know. We know that originally these Greek sculptures were very, very colorful. Um, they had different pieces of um, bronze or gold attached to them, which over time just sort of people might have um, taken them etc. And then there was different colored waxes and different bright colors for this hair, the lips, the clothes, and the headdresses, which is something that's hard for us to think about now, considering we don't have any, there's no sculpt, sculptures or statues of the sort that have any color to them that come from ancient Greece. Um, creating these lifelike statues was one of the greatest achievements of Greek sculptors. So you need to know that in the beginning, they very much resembled what Egyptian statues look like. So think of like when we studied ancient Egypt, you have the Greeks, um, sorry, the Egyptians having these very, very large statues. Ramses is a great example, right? So like facing front, they're very stiff, their arms are down by their side. Um, but then later on, gradually, these statues in ancient Greece become more realistic and where they're doing more natural poses. They're showing detail, their hair, their muscles, their clothing. So you need to know the difference between the earlier Greek statues resembling the Egyptian statues and then the more realistic statues that the Greeks um, developed later on. Another um, important Athenian you need to know is this man right here. His name is Phidias, okay? Oopsie, sorry. Phidias is one of the most famous Athenian sculptors. Now, he designed that frieze in the, the first part of the um, temple on the Parthenon, and he also was the one who constructed the, temp the statue of Athena inside the temple. Um, she had a gold shield right here. There's two faces on that shield that we can't see right now. One was of uh, Pericles, who we learned about in the beginning of this chapter, the great Athenian leader who um, takes Athens and builds it up after the Greco-Persian War. And then the next face is Phidias himself. So pause the video. I want you guys to do the check for understanding and the reading notes for section four.